Hi kiddos. Welcome back to Pandemic Learning, another episode. Today we're going to talk about Sitting Bowl, but first I've got a few announcements for you. So number one, thank you all so much for filling out my survey. If you haven't gotten to do it, go do it. It's in the Remind channel. I'll post a link in the comment in the description of this video so you can go do it. Um, based on your responses, I've decided that I'm going to hold my office hours from on Tuesdays from noon to two. So that'll be my afternoon office hours on Tuesdays and on Thursdays in the evening from five to seven. Um, I'll send you a link for Zoom, which is the program I'm using to record this video. Um, and it basically kind of allows us to FaceTime without you having to have an iPhone. You can do it on a computer or on a cell phone. Um, I'll send you guys the link and the instructions a little bit later, but so that you know, it's Tuesday noon to two and Thursday five to seven. I'll be available to answer real-time questions about the packets the district's sending out, about these lectures that I've been making and Ms. Crow's been making, um, or just to chat with you about current events if you have questions about that, anything you guys need. Um, that being said, you can also always contact me on a reminder email. Um, and if it's outside of these hours, but you still have a question, don't hesitate to let me know. Um, Y'all know I'm always going to do my best to be there for you whenever you need. So announcement number two. One of my survey questions was, do you guys have any questions for us right now as teachers, right? And someone asked, um, are we losing this battle about COVID, against COVID-19? I want to address that really quick. Well, y'all know I'm not an expert in the medical field, right? Um, I still wanted to address this because I know it's on most of your minds and it's probably what most of you guys are thinking about right now. Um, from what I can tell, based on the news, right? The New Mexico and Navajo Nation leaders are absolutely making the right choices. I know it's probably really monotonous for you guys to be stuck in one place, not getting to go places, not getting to go to school uh, or work or any of that but I do think it's the right choice. So follow the curfew, follow the restrictions, um, do what you can to social distance. Uh, I just wanted to tell you, I was really relieved to see on the survey that a lot of you guys, the hardest thing about this has been the boredom, right? Like just being stuck at home and not having anything to do. Um, I do know for, for some of you right now, it's been really hard, right? You're worried about your family getting sick, your aunts, your uncles, your moms, your dads, your cousins. Um, I know that some of you are having a hard time planning your future right now and figuring out how that's going to work, or you're facing having your hours at work cut and not being able to work at all, um, or even just trying to figure out how to recognize the fact that you guys are going to graduate this year from, from high school, and that's a big deal, and we don't get the normal ceremonies and whatever to, to celebrate that. Um, so I wanted to remind you guys of who y'all are during this time, right? Um, and this might be a little cheesy, but it doesn't mean it's not true. So... People told me when I said I was going to go teach in Gallup that I'd have trouble getting the kids to talk, right? But y'all have shown me that it's the complete opposite of that, right? You guys have so much to say. You were the class that walked in every day grumpy or annoyed or tired or not wanting to be there. And you sat down and you were like, no, 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 I'm just kidding. You're going to listen to me because I have ideas and I have thoughts and I have jokes and I have wonderful things to say. And I love that. That's why I love teaching you guys, right? So don't lose that attitude. Now's the time when people need your amazing sense of humor and your amazing ideas and your tough as nails attitudes to get through this, right? I hope you all realize now that I wasn't lying when I told you the world can change in a second because it really can. But I know that you guys are ready for this. You're all stronger than anything the world can throw at you and you walked into my classroom already that way. So say, stay strong, stay informed, and be there for each other because that's who you are and that's what you guys do. And are we losing the battle? I don't think so. Things might get worse before they get better, but I believe in you guys and your strength to make it through this. So that serious stuff being said, we get to go on to the fun things. A lot of you guys told me uh, that you were interested in learning about fun history stuff that we didn't get to learn in class because of content and standards and all that. So today, we're gonna do something that you guys have been asking me for for a long time. We're gonna learn or start learning about Sitting Bull. It's gonna be one of two videos. Uh, this one's gonna be Introduction and Childhood. Real quick, I got a disclaimer for you. Um, I'm not an expert in the subject, right? Native history isn't necessarily something that I'm an expert in, um, but I fact-checked as best I can given our limited resources during the virus. Um, and please, if you're someone who has more knowledge and ends up watching this, correct me, let me know what I got wrong. Um, add stuff so I can make sure that my students get the best information. Um, students, if you guys want to go do your own research and like add to this, let me know. We'll make it work. Um, that being said, here we go. Sitting Bull was born 
in 1831. And I'm gonna share my screen with you guys now because I have some pictures for you to check out while we do this. For some context, 1831 is about 30 years before the Civil War started. So his adult name, and I apologize if I butcher this, was Tatanka Ayotanka. The name means a buffalo bull sitting intractably, sitting stubbornly or immovably on his haunches. According to Ernie Lapointe, who's a confirmed descendant of Sitting Bull and an author of a book about him, the American version of his name is not necessarily true to the Lakota meaning. So Sitting Bull does not mean buffalo bull who sits down, is how Lapointe phrased it. And this is LaPointe for anyone who's interested. So we'll all be calling Sitting Bull by Sitting Bull for the means of this lecture. I know you guys are all aware of the difficulties of translation and the danger of how white people are often insensitive to the meaning of translation when it comes from native culture. So I wanted to let you guys know that there was some disagreement about even the name Sitting Bull um, before we start so you can decide what to think for yourselves. Now, Sitting Bull was both a warrior and a leader in his adulthood, and he became part of something that uh, was the well-known Strong Heart Warrior Society, as well as a society called the Silent Eaters. Um, this is actually the, what you see on the screen is the current logo for the Strong Heart Society, which still exists today in a very different form. Um, it's more like a sort of militia or human rights organization. But at the time, it was a well-known distinguished club or sort of like what a secret society is. And Sitting Bull, he's known in history as a man who was defiant and a strong leader, who led his people against the forced eviction, attacks, and arguably genocide of his people by the US military. Now, there are many legendary stories about Sitting Bull. Some of the legends might not actually be factual and it's hard to figure out which is which. But what we do know is that the man was a great leader in part because his sheer force of will and his brazenness in the face of grave danger, just like his name would suggest. In fact, according to PBS, once in an 1872, during a battle with soldiers who were protecting railroad workers on the Yellowstone River, Sitting Bull led four other warriors out between the lines of battle and sat calmly sharing a pipe with them as bullets buzzed around. Carefully, he reamed the pipe out when they were finished and then casually walked away. So that's who we're about to learn about. Now, I know you're all excited to hear about how Sitting Bull defied the US military, stuck it to the white man, and don't worry, we're gonna get to plenty of that. But first, I want to share an interesting fact that I came across. Sitting Bull didn't even see a US soldier until the year 1863. That's what the US flag looked like in 1863. So Sitting Bull was 32 the first time he actually had interaction with a US soldier. So the reason he had interaction with them was because the US led an attack on Lakota lands and people as retaliation for the Santee Rebellion, um, which had happened a year before and was completely unrelated to the Hunkpapa Lakota, which is Sitting Bull's tribe. Um, I thought it was interesting that he wasn't involved with the U.S., which is what nowadays, right, and in the lens of U.S. history, often told by white people, he's most famous for, right, is defying the U.S. military. Um, but he didn't even start that until his 30s, right? And what you guys will see as we go on in this lesson is that Sitting Bull actually was very adamant about avoiding the U.S. military and avoiding the white man. Um, so if you think about it, uh, he was 32 the first time he encountered them. At the same time in the US, right, the mid 1860s, the average life expectancy for a white man was about 45 years old. Now, this led to some really cultural differences because pre Columbus in uh, Native America, before 1492, the average life expectancy uh, for a Native man was about 55 to 60 years old. So, culturally, people were expected to live longer. Um, now, my original source for this is Reddit, but I also checked it against a few other articles, and I think that's pretty accurate. This difference in life expectancy meant that Sitting Bull was already around middle age in his people's eyes, right, before he started doing the work that he's now famous for, um, specifically fighting the U.S. military. All of this is to say, you don't know how life's going to take you or how long it'll take you to reach a goal you have even one you've been prepared for since birth, like you'll learn that Sitting Bull was. His leadership, and what I want you guys to take from this lesson, other than cool facts about Sitting Bull, 
is that this is a lesson in both destiny, but also in patience, which I know you have to practice a lot of right now. So rewinding back to the 1830s, Sitting Bull grew up in the Black Hills and Great Plains region of what is today South Dakota. Growing up, he was groomed for leadership. His mother, her holy door woman, and his father, who was known as Returns Again and later as Jumping Bull, were prominent leaders in the Bad Bow Band of the Hukpapa Lakota. In infancy, the name Returns Again was chosen for, young, for the young Sitting Bull. Uh, the name chosen for him was Jumping Badger. But as a child, Jumping Badger took his time instead of rushing into things and acting energetically like all the other children. And the people uh, who he grew up around, they saw this as something maybe not so good about him. And so they started to call him, and I'm sorry if I say this wrong, but Hunkeshni, which means weak or slow moving in the Lakota language. So despite this uh, reputation that this child had gotten, right, for being very slow, for taking his time with things, Sitting Bull's uncle, who was the chief of the band, and also a medicine man and spiritual advisor, saw Sitting Bull's intellectual and analytical promise and became his mentor. Now, I think there's a story about Sitting Bull as a child that will help you understand why his uncle saw it in him. So, during a competition, Sitting Bull accidentally broke another child's arrow because they were shooting at the same bird. Now, as you guys can imagine, back then, a bow and arrow was an important thing and breaking an arrow was really hard to replace, right? Because it took a long time to make one right. The other boy got angry and he wants to fight Sitting Bull, then called Jumping Badger. But Jumping Badger stayed calm and instead he offered up one of his own arrows that he had put a lot of time into making in perfect order to keep the peace between him and this other boy. When the two boys returned to their camp, Jumping Badger was the one who was rewarded by the village elders for his wise behavior because he avoided the fight and he was fair rather than worrying about the competition that had started the fight in the first place. As Jumping Badger grew older, instead of a reputation for being slow, he gained a reputation for strategy and wisdom beyond his years. When he was 10, the camp was tracking a herd of buffalo. Instead of following the bigger herd with the rest of the hunters, Sitting Bull's uncle and mentor told him to go after a small group of buffalo that was close by. When the two came upon the smaller herd, Sitting Bull, against his uncle's advice, rode directly into the center of it and felled a bull, a male buffalo, with his arrow. Now, this has been a very dangerous move because if you startle a herd of buffalo, you can cause a stampede, and a hunter caught in a stampede could get knocked off his horse and crushed. So when Sitting Bull's uncle, when he came back after having felled the bull, his uncle asked him why he'd been so reckless as to go after the bull instead of a cow, a female buffalo, who'd been at the edge of the herd. Sitting Bull is said to have told his uncle that he saw the cow had a calf and that had he killed the mother cow, the baby would not have been able to survive. His uncle was impressed and he praised his compassion. When they brought the bull back to Sitting Bull's mother to be butchered and skinned, Sitting Bull asked his mother to have some, save some of the choice cuts of meat for a widow and her children that lived in their band because they had no one to provide for them. This is when Sitting Bull gained his reputation not only for compassion, but also for generosity, things that were highly, highly praised in the Lakota culture. Another important trait for a man uh, in the Lakota culture was to be a brave warrior. The people of the plains at that time had a tradition that you entered manhood once you counted coup. Counting coup is when you use a specific cudgel-like stick, like you guys can see in this picture, to touch another warrior during battle, but without killing him. In fact, counting coup was held in higher regard than actually killing another person in battle at the time. So, Sitting Bull counted coup for the first time on a crow warrior during his first raid at 14. This is when his father gave him his shield that he would use. There's the shield that he would use for the rest of his life. It was a buffalo hide shield with a black thunderbird in the center, as you can see, and two semicircles in red and black. Now, in the coming years of his warriorhood, Sitting Bull would become known for two things. One, he would ride into battle against other tribes sitting straight on his horse, instead of lying against his horse's neck for protection like many did. 
The second is that despite counting coup over 69 times, as custom dictated, Sitting Bull would have been allowed to wear an eagle feather in his hair for each time he counted coup, so over 69 feathers. But most of the time, Sitting Bull only wore one red eagle feather in his hair to represent his very first coup, which showed great humility on his part, a trait that he exhibited throughout his life as a leader. So that's his childhood. In the next video, we'll explore his adult life. I'll tell you more about his leadership as an adult. We'll learn about his family. And finally, we'll learn about what is perhaps his most famous battle, um, the battle at Little Bighorn. So if you want a written version of the video, uh, I'll have a link to it in the video description so that you guys can go read all this information. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what questions you have, what else you want to learn about Sitting Bull in the next video. I'll try and get it published sometime next week. And as always, email, remind, and now office hours. There will be more information about that coming up soon. Thank you guys for your time, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week.